वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम इन टू अ न्यू इम्पॉर्टेंट लेसन रिगार्डिंग द स्टेट इन दिस लेसन और लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस डिवाइन ऑरिजन थियरी अबाउट स्टेट वी विल डिस्कस द थेरीज ऑफ द ऑरिजन ऑफ द स्टेट इन फोर टू फाइव लेक्चर्स we will discuss all those theories the theories of the divine origin the theory of the four social contract patriarchal matriarchal evolutionary theory so in this specifically in this lecture we will discuss divine origin theory what it is its origin its uh, uh, some uh, its uh, defects as well as uh, uh, the theory will be explained so without wasting our time let's start in introduction uh, the question is that this is a question in the in the human mind that uh, that how state came into be that uh, how has it developed so since the dawn of the political consciousness we have a question in our mind these this, this important question that how state it came into be or how it is developed so thinkers have given various uh, explanation regarding this and the th- they have presented the theories about the origin and development of the state so the reason is that the, that the knowledge of the ancient history and the society did not exist in the past so at the present why they are uh, having an answer of these questions so when uh, you know the historical knowledge fails men resorted towards speculation so speculated one so the philosophers speculated uh, about the causes and the conditions and which the state originated the nature nature of the to understand the truth why to understand the truth the conditions to understand the truth uh, when discusses when discuss incorrect one so uh, it discovers correct theories what does it mean it means that uh, uh that uh, by discussing by discussing incorrect theories the first thing keep in mind that to understand the truth the second is that by when you discuss the incorrect theories we can dis- discover the correct theories of the origin of the state so when we d- when we discuss the incorrect so then we will, would be able to discuss the correct one this is then th- this is important one and the second place uh, uh we can say that uh, spirit of the times in past it was true spirit of the times so the study of the speculative theories all those speculative theories it is useful it was useful in showing us the spirit of the that, that time the the theme of the time the tone of the time uh, when there was there were first uh, expounded by their advocates although we we now believe them to be a false one and uh, yet in their days they were believed to be true so they exercise powerful influence on the minds of the millions of the men and women and shaped the political institutions the form the basis of the you show the nature nature of the state institution as well so in the last line forces which shape political thought and practice all about so these are we can say these are the forces uh, their study helps us to understand the nature of the state the the the, the, the other institution and as well as uh, these are the i have told you these are the forces which shaped political thought and practice so that tell us about the people their thoughts their beliefs all about means their thoughts their beliefs their customs their environment their development so on and so forth so uh, suppose i am uh, going to explain you the very first one that would be the divine origin theory here yes divine origin theory it is as old as political thought itself the divine origin theory is a so in ancient times the politics and religion you know they were they were not separate they were being de- dealt by the king at the same time was the ruler king and the same time was the priest and uh, uh, it was then believed that god created the state as he did everything else so he was 
पावरफुल वन ई कैन डू एवरीथिंग सो ही डिड एवरीथिंग एल्स ही मेड सर्टन पर्सन किंग्स टू रूल ओवर अदर्स एन एंशन टाइम इन सच कंट्रीज एज सो इजिप्शियन मिसप्रटीम स्टडी हिस्ट्री ऑफ इजिप्शियन सिविलाइजेशन विल फाइंड एट द किंग्स वर बोथ द रूलर एंड द प्रियस और द गॉड किंग्स द हैव एन एमेंस पावर्स इन ऑल द अफेयर्स लेड विद ग्रेट रिलीजियस थाट एंड बिलीव दैट द डिविनिटी ऑफ द किंग हैज नो मीनिंग एंड विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम स्लर्ली एंड ग्रेजुअली विद द एडवांसमेंट ऑफ विद विद यू नो द रनायस पीरियड एंड even in the later period the peoples the public they 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 believed that the kings were the for the shadows of the god on the on the earth they they respect them they they even prayed in, in front of them uh, they bow their heads in front of them like you see like you have witnessed like sorry you have uh, studied in different books and uh, some material that the that the that there are divine rights of the king uh, like uh, in many ages suppose uh, 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 in your uh, in your english literature you have already i think when you were studying when, when you have studied all these uh, that the that the time of the king james first of the england and sir robert filmier in his in, in his book patriarchy is uh, exposed all those things so uh, but that was its last flicker all these two which i will explain later Uh, with the with the with the with the rising importance of the social contract theory and the with the and the 17th and century you know that age is called the age of the reasons so they declared all the things clear to the people the public and the public uh, public became became uh, enlightened and the fruits of the democracy been flourished throughout the world and people become aware that the that the theory of the divine origin uh, is no meaning and it became lost it has no appeal and influence and became discredited in the last time discredited and discarded even and uh, now comes to the next is what the theory means uh, the theory rest uh, stands on the three important ideas uh, the theory of divine origin so the first one is the state is created by god the first thing is that this is the state which is so yeah the religious one the ideological one that the state is not created by man that it is been created by god the kings are the second is the kings are divinely appointed uh, people are not supposed to appoint their kings the kings have been appointed divinely and third one they are answerable not to the people but to the god so the three things here in this age you can see these have been challenged there is no thing like the states been created by the people and the they are represented about again they are people appoint them and democratic system even in 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 different systems and even they are answerable to the people not to the god and to their rule and not to the human authority at that time so in other word the state and its laws are divine institution therefore Uh, uh to disobey the king is not only a crime but also a sin at that time so because to disobey the laws of the state is really to disobey the laws of the god so the king is the representative or the vicegerent of the god you know and uh, in in middle ages he was called uh, shadow of the god on the earth as the medieval muslims and the called them the um, the sultan and the moguls in 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 our uh, muslim history you see uh, they called them the shadow zil subhani or zillah and any different word they have used so the king is therefore responsible to god for his government and all his actions not to the people has been chosen and appointed by god so he is answerable to god so he is superior to the people superior that the god choose him and he on the on, on the dent of his wisdom and his acts are beyond human criticism so he is above the accountability from the people by the people sorry so the people must obey the laws of the king and uh, blindly follow those laws the theory is explained now comes to the divine origin right of the kings as we already explained but for you for the sake of question purposes so uh 
It was presented by King James I of England and then Robert Filmer in 17th century and was its a modern variant. So the theory of divine rights with King <coughs> James Filmer 17 the modern version of the old age theory of divine origin. So these two people have presented but it is the you can replica of the previous one but the version is a different one. The tone is the same one. King James quarreled with uh, his parliament uh, because he, he claimed that uh, a share in the government of the country he told his parliament that uh, a king <coughs> i am uh, i am reading from here that uh, uh, king james in his book true law of free monarchy true law of uh, true law of free monarchy that uh, that uh, it is atheism and blasphemy uh, to dispute what god can do so they can never do anything against the wishes of the god sir it is a presumption and high contempt in a subject to dispute what a king can do or say that can, king can't uh, do this or that the kings are breathing images of god on the earth similarly the stuart apologist sir robert filmier showed in his book patriarchy in 1680 i think 1680 yes uh, <coughs> that god created adam and gave him supreme authority over ev and their children so this is the supremacy that god gifted into the adam so this is you know patriarchal or paternal power vested in the adam by god himself and passed by descent to the kings so from adam this uh, power or this supremacy being shifted to the kings and princes of the of the, of the europe because uh, uh, present kings are, uh, are 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 reputed to be the next heirs to him so thus filmier endeavored to justify the divine rights of the king to be tyrant by means of pseudo historical myths of the bible and the primogeniture principles so this Uh, filmier and uh, james uh, gave impetus and power to the divine origin right of the uh, of the king uh, we cannot uh, left this theory on the mercy of the of the without any criticism so there are it, it, it passes through strong criticism in the first uh, it is against a human reason and experience that uh, that religion has no uh, Uh, religion has no uh, uh, has no uh, uh, portion in the uh, part in the in the evolution of the state uh, nor laws so the state you know the state is a human one has been created by the human and divinity and divine uh, and there is no place of divine institution to here so religion has uh, undoubtedly played a part in the evolution of the state but politically political authority cannot be justified on the religious grounds Uh, that uh, it is against the human reason and experience the kings cannot possesses uh, possesses uh, the divine right to do wrong moreover you know we live in a age of evolution and science which shows us that every institution has its own laws and evolutions and development so religion cannot explain the operation of these lies it deals only with the things which are spiritual one which the state is not the second point bad kings justified their rule by this theory this theory sports reaction it leaves the people at the mercy of the despots so it justifies misrule and oppression of the people by the hands of the vicious kings so vicious kings justify their uh, vicious or uh, uh, any of the bad actions uh, are misrule by means of such a theory that they are doing that is these are the messages uh, been they they receive the messages by the god so they, the the people should obey what they are doing so they justify their rule by this so this is not uh, uh, this is not fair one uh, passivism and conservatism i written the third line the passive is it is dangerous because it justifies not only misrule of the king the tyranny of the king but also it gives uh, passivism and conservatism among the people and it is an um, it is an you know it is an attempt to check the popular awakening of the of the england and other european countries in short uh, it ignores human efforts so with the passage of time the people sh- uh, shut up 
the cult of the church and became free from their its clutches and uh, and uh, and become uh, they, they found uh, they become free and found their uh, their concepts like uh, uh, the concept of liberation and they revolted against those that that, that is a uh, detailed one let not uh, discuss here monarchical one the concept is monarchical it explain the monarchical form of government the the uh, the the power of the the force of the kingship so uh, you know it throws no light on the on the origin of the republican or the democratic it is against all those and it negates all those and the question like the, it it, uh, it even it doesn't explain such questions as succession of the king and so on the court intrigues and etc etc you know the for example the the the, the over so the, the people go against these uh, in the history throughout the history uh, even from the martin luther and the latter period like uh, go no elsewhere it to come to the the era of the uh, uh, subcontinent like the mogul emperors are the sikh rebels are the maratha rajas are the british imperialist uh, they have been they have been challenged you know the challenge so no light on republican or democratic so there is no room for those and uh, <clears throat> complete obedience under the under the supremacy of the king it has no value in the past it secured general peace and obedience in the trouble periods of early age of the human history the kings of old checked anarchy and protected their life property and government by claiming that they were divinely uh, anointed and their laws were the laws of the religion or the laws of the god so in those days only divine authority and divinely created laws and institution could be obeyed by the people uh, willingly and unquestioningly so it gave the state a moral base at that time the king must be just and vicious because god created them they can do everything for the sake of the state so that's the end of uh, this lecture if you have uh, any problem so you may comment me or call me in comment section thank you